Luis Guerrero, also known as Chispas, which loosely translates to Sparky, became enchanted with welding when he was a boy. His step-grandfather taught him the craft, and it took root in his heart. My mom and dad divorced when I was uh, about, I guess, I was seven years old. And my mom uh, met this man, and his dad was a welder by trade and had his business. So uh, I learned from him. I, I just was, when we go visit him, I was just mesmerized by the cheese bus, the sparks, you know, and also uh, seeing raw material on the ground one day, and a couple of days later, a trailer developed from that, the, the metal that was one time on the ground. And uh, I thought that was amazing. And uh, so I, I decided one day to pick up the trade. I've been welding for about, I would say, 25 years now. When he first began welding, Luis made utilitarian items, such as trailers and barbecue pits. In an instant, that all changed. He became a sculptor. Then one day, I had a lot of uh, spare time, and, uh, and I was working out of my garage at home, and I just decided to put this fish together out of just found objects. And my friends would come by, and they thought, wow, that was pretty cool. So I'd make another one and another, and I think all together, I made like four or five fish, and then uh, I said, man, this is pretty good. I like that. The artist refers to himself as a dreamer, and dreams underpin and give direction to his art. A lot of my dreams have come true, a lot of them. I had a, um, a dream uh, to put a sculpture at the downtown UTSA campus when they were building it, and my dream came true, and I have a sculpture and other art pieces at the downtown campus. Uh, that was my, my dream and dream come true. And I also had dreams of uh, my art being in museums and galleries and, and that I accomplished that also. So uh, I'm a big dreamer. Luis is a self-educated artist. His full-time job and his art are related, but the latter is a direct result of his dreams. I started welding when I was like 25, you know, early 20s. I started, so I had been welding for a good while before I started doing artwork. I'm a diesel fuel injection technician. That's why when you see my art, I use a lot of used parts that are internal injection parts that aren't, uh, aren't just available at your neighborhood auto parts, you know, they're specialized parts. A dream he had about Martians inspired a series on Martian art that was exhibited at the prestigious Blue Star Contemporary Art Center in San Antonio. I had a dream um, one night, and the dream in that dream, there was a Martian that told me to show the people on Earth what they would play with, what kind of toys they would play with. Like, we would play with our G.I. Joes and Barbies. Well, they had G.I. Joes and Barbies. And I saw one in this dream, and uh, I didn't know what size it was, but to me it looked like it was 17, 18 inches, you know. So I came to my studio, and uh, I started working on another project, and then I remembered that dream. I remembered that this Martian had told me to show people on Earth what they played with. So I made one, and then I made another, and another, and then I think I stopped at 30, and I numbered them one through 30 and uh, they're, they're all different. Because music is important to Cheese Bus, he has created an iconography of musicians. I love music. Music motivates me. And I think music makes the world go around. And music is very powerful. It, uh, it doesn't matter what kind of music you like. As long as you like some type of music, it makes you feel good. That motivates me. So I'm not a musician, but I make musicians. I invent musicians. Luis fashions scrap metal into musicians that practically come to life, leading the viewer down a path of memories and fantasies. At first I had called my flacos because I had the first few that I made playing the accordion were flaco, like flaco Jimenez, you know. And then I said, well, I'm going to change them to los flacos because they're all flacos. So I would make them all, uh, either playing the guitar, an accordion, which I love the accordion, and uh, other musicians, drummers horn players. I just love to create and invent. 
A conjunto of his musicians made up Luis's first exhibition, launching an artistic career that has continued to rise. Joe Lopez gave me my first one-man show. Matter of fact, he, he provided the launch pad for my career in art. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't find anybody that wanted to show my art. Yeah, until I knocked on Joe Lopez's door and, and uh, he, uh, he said he had to take a look at my work because he didn't know me. I went home, came back and showed him my flacos and he said, yeah, man. I mean, still remember he said, that's pesado. Uh, he gave me my first show like in about two months after that. And when I talked to him, I just said, look, I just need someone to, I just need you to provide a launching pad, you know, and I could take it from there. If you just give me the opportunity. And if I crash, I crash. If I don't, well, you know, but I've been going, I've been flying ever since. Recently, Luis has expanded his iconography of musicians to reflect a more diverse geography. Now I'm moving from conjunto to more jazz players, drummers, uh, horn players. And depending on what part of the country, if I would go to the east, I would do more jazz. And if I go to the west of the United States, I would think I would do more conjunto music, you know. Luis's works do not usually include political messages or symbols. Instead, the artist celebrates his community through his own artistic creativity and skill with metal. But the plight of the migrant workers so moved him that he addressed it artistically. I don't really try to make any statements with my art. I just make my art. And, uh, uh, but I did do one statement with, with, uh, with the migrant workers. Luis's grandfather and mother experienced the tragic incident that moved Luis deeply. The reason I made the migrant workers was uh, my great-grandfather was a migrant worker. My whole family was migrant workers, my mother, my uncles. And one time they were up in uh, Ohio. They were on the way back from, from doing their, their work. And uh, my great-grandfather, my mother, and other siblings were in the back of this pickup truck and my great-grandfather's son was driving and it started raining and uh, this oncoming car with his bright lights on and blinded my great-uncle and he went off the road and hit a telephone pole and my great-grandfather flew out and broke his neck he was the only one that I mean they got banged up but he was the only one that got killed so I thought wow you know I'm gonna make a, uh, a tribute to, to my great-grandfather Luis's artistic vision of migrant workers fashioned out of metal came to fruition in 1999. His friend, Joe Lopez, invited him to do a show in San Benito, Texas. I didn't know how I was going to do them, but I was just, uh, I started cutting them up, cut up the chain, and, and, and formed these migrant workers. And one of them is called uh, La Mano del Diablo, short handled hoe, and the other one is called Lagrimas y Sudor. And on the bottom of the base, I wrote Huelga on there. And uh, on the uh, La Mano del Diablo, I painted the Aztec eagle that's on the United Farm Workers flag on the base of that. But I did that to, and, and not really for my, my great-grandfather, but for all migrant workers, so they could see that the struggle, the hardship, you know, uh, that they all went through. As Luis's career has developed, he has begun to work in media other than metal, including paint and mosaics. I started painting, uh, I think, about five years ago. I bought some canvas and <laughs> I bought some paints and bought some brushes and sketched something out and started painting. Mosaics, I started doing them because I would make the tables out of wrought iron and then I would put this mosaic on top of the table. I love just doing all kinds of art. UTSA invited me to do a, a litho, and I was honored because of the uh, group that they selected. So I think they said 16 artists from their collection, like Malquias Montoya, Vincent Valdez, Alex Rubio, Luis uh, Valadez, Javier Garza, Luis Jimenez, Deborah Vasquez. It's, it's awesome to be in that group. At the heart of Luis's procedure is his ability to access a childlike joy and curiosity that he translates to his irreducible, vivid interpretations of the world. When I was making the saxophone player, I asked him, what do you want to play? Do you want to play a saxophone? Do you want to play a guitar? What, what do you want to play? 
So I just look at him. It's okay. Saxophone. Let me find you a saxophone. So it's kind of like, you know, like you would do when you were a kid. You know, you you're you're playing with your your toys. So that's basically what I do with with my sculptures. The size of Luis's sculptures vary. Most are consistent with reality, but his sculptures at the University of Texas at San Antonio are larger than life. I have a sculpture, and it's uh, of a flower, and there's a little bumblebee buzzing towards this flower that's from out of space. That's the smallest piece of art that I have made. And the largest was the stick men that are at the, on the grounds of uh, UTSA, downtown campus. Yeah, those are, I think, nine footers. How Luis obtained commissions at UTSA is a moving story, and it exemplifies the efforts University President Ricardo Romo has made to promote and support Chicano art as a whole. I used to rent another part of my studio where I had an art gallery, and I would have shows. And this guy was having a show, and somehow uh, Dr. Romo came to see a piece of his that was hanging in, in, in my space there. And I was working in my studio, and he just happened to walk in and liked my work and saw this great big fish hanging from the ceiling and said, uh, maybe one day we could commission you to do a roadrunner for us. And I said, sure, I'd love to. So he sent over Arturo Almeida, which is the art buyer or specialist for you to say. And uh, we talked it over. I sketched something out and got commissioned. And was, I'm now I'm part of UTSA's, uh, uh, been archived through UTSA now. Luis's sculpting method is his very own. For example, he usually does not make preliminary sketches. I would say 80% of the time I don't sketch. I just go by memory. I'm watching TV and I could see something in back of a sitcom and I think, wow, that would be a nice sculpture. Most of Luis's pieces evoke a sense of joy and whimsy. I would like my art to make you feel good when you look at my art. I want you to smile. You might have, you might have a tough day, you know, there's some people that come to my studio, you know, after working all day, you know, and they got maybe other problems in their, in their mind. But when they come to my studio and walk in, they forget their problems for those few minutes, you know. It's awesome. Some works call up deeper, more serious emotions. This elderly man came up to me and he tapped me on the shoulder and he asked me if I was the artist who did those market workers on display. And I said, uh, yes, I am. He goes, I, I don't want to buy them and I don't think I could afford to buy them. But me and my wife were looking at him and he was teary eyed. And he said that, uh, that it reminded him of when the struggle that he went through. <laughs> 